All right, man, peace. So Hall of Fame wide receiver Chris Carter, he recently made an appearance on the Skip and Shannon show to, the, to discuss the newest developments in the Ezekiel Elliott domestic violence case with the NFL. Let's see what he has to say. I talked to you about the big story of the day. The NFL PA accused the NFL of a league orchestrated conspiracy against Ezekiel Elliott. What's your reaction? Well, I think conspiracy, it's really hard to, to prove conspiracy. And if you're going to allege conspiracy, then you have to include Ezekiel Elliott as the lead conspirator to destroy himself. Because he's the one who has consistently made bad decisions from his last year in college all the way up to you know, his rookie season in the NFL into this past offseason. He's shown a serious lack of self-awareness. I mean, look, I'll be the first one to tell you that the man has to live his life. But he has to be aware of the environment that he's in. But there are a lot of other dynamics going on here. But I'll touch on that as this video goes goes along. Um, what I think they have um, in talking to people that are very, very close to Zeke in the situation, um, they thought that the burden of proof was on the National Football League. They thought that they had enough evidence. They thought that they could present some things and present in their case um, that might go to punch holes in the six-game suspension. Um, they didn't think that any domestic violence occurred. So I'm not surprised um, that they were going to dispute it. Um, I'm not surprised that they weren't going to take some type of falling on the mercy of the court saying, yes, we agree. Look, let me say this. And um, it's very, very obvious. The reason why the NFL is giving Ezekiel Elliott six games is because they're scared of what this woman is going to go to the press with if, if they let Ezekiel Elliott off. The NFL right now is an optics league. What do I mean by that? They're more worried about how things seem than how things actually are. And that, that's what happens when you fall prey to the liberal media, and in this case, the liberal sports media. I remember a while ago, I had some idiot harassing me about what, what the hell is liberal sports media. Well, the liberal sports media is the sports version of the liberal media. What does that mean? They have to overcompensate for any perceived slight against women, homosexuals, or transgenders. Okay? The NFL right now, they cannot, in their mind, they cannot afford another, another hit in regards to how their players are perceived to treat women. They know that this woman has enough evidence to go to TMZ, to go to, go to a lot of these other tabloid websites and publications, claiming that Ezekiel Elliott beat on her and the NFL let her off. Or let him off, pardon me. And that's what they're worried about, and that's why the NFL is going to give him this six-game suspension. Something happened, but not to the degree for which um, I'm being accused of. That was not their approach. Their approach is he doesn't deserve any type of suspension, and that's kind of the basis of their case based on a number of things through investigating that they presented to Harold Henderson the last several days. Look, let me say this. Uh, I'm already on record as saying I don't believe that Ezekiel Elliott beat up that woman. She claims that uh, over the course of a five-day period that she was the victim of domestic violence at the hands of Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott is about six feet tall, 220 pounds. He runs through and over guys that outweigh him by 50, 60 pounds. If he really was trying to hurt that woman, it wouldn't take him five days to do it. He could do it in five minutes. As a matter of fact, he could kill her in five minutes. All right. Those so-called marks that I saw on her body, they look like something that, that, that would come on a, on a Caucasian person's body if they put suction cups on their body. It didn't even look like bruises. It looked like some mild hickeys. All right? So I have little doubt that um, he's a victim of his own stupidity. But, you know, maybe this is something that's going to be done to him so that he can learn, hopefully, to make better decisions. And as Terrell Owens told him, that there are a million women out there there's no need for you to be shacking up with a woman, much less taking one of them seriously. In Western society, Western civilization, you know, there's really only about one out of every two or three thousand women that you can take seriously. Especially being somebody in his position, being a, a, a high value commodity. There's no way in the world that he should have been living with a female at 19, 20 years old. But I blame his father for that, for allowing it. When you I mean... Anybody who has, you know, siblings or children, you know, when you're, you know, when you're sibling, you might love them. But, you know, when your sibling or your child is not too swift as far as making decisions. 
Sometimes you have to protect them from themselves or give them certain advice, certain words of wisdom to help them out because you know that on their own, they're going to make bad decisions. Ezekiel Elliott is one of those people. It's very, very clear. He's not too sharp upstairs. All right. So, CC, now where do we go from here? You, you've seen some of the testimony that's come out. The, late, the lead investigator said she did not feel comfortable with the young lady's test, uh, uh, the alleged victim's testimony, the credibility, the inconsistencies in her story. She did not feel comfortable mm -hmm. that Zeke should get any game. So how does the league stand up and say, yeah, he still deserves six games? Easy, Shannon. Um, the league, as I already stated, is an optics league. They're not working according to the laws of the judicial system of the United States where you have to prove things beyond a reasonable doubt. All right. The NFL right now is looking at any athlete that is accused of domestic violence or violence against children or or sexual assault, sexual abuse as guilty until proven innocent. Any form of evidence, you're starting at guilt until you can completely exonerate yourself. And the, and the purported victim has no form of proof or evidence. That is how the NFL is working right now. Right? It's already been bargained uh, collectively that the commissioner is the, you know, he's the judge, he's the jury, and he's the executioner. All it takes is what is esteemed in his mind and his counsel for there to be a preponderance of evidence. That's all they need. All right? Then they, they're not trying to prove Zeke guilty. It's, Ze it's Zeke's job and his, his people's job to prove himself innocent. That's how they're working. Period. So the NFL right now, and this is due to the NFL getting lambasted due to, due to the Ray Rice incident, they're not willing to go through that meat grinder again. They're not willing to be subjected to the rants and ravings of a lot of these angry female sports journalists on ESPN who are going to go on and on and on and on about the NFL and how they view women. The NFL does not want to have to lose any sponsorships. I'm pretty sure that Goodell had to go through a lot of ass chewings over that Ray Rice incident. Remember, he works as an ambassador for 32 billionaires. Uh, it's his job to make sure that the money keeps rolling in. Uh, and, you know, if they have to suspend Ezekiel Elliott for six games, according to his, um, you know, according to his decision making, according to his prudence, that's what is that's what he's going to decide. Now, I'm pretty sure that Jerry Jones has a lot of provocative information on the side of Ezekiel Elliott. It is his job to protect Zeke. As, as one commenter said in the video that I did on Ezekiel Elliott and Terrell Owens, he stated that the woman that uh, Ezekiel Elliott was living with was a prostitute. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Right? It, but it would even make it worse on Ezekiel Elliott's behalf that he's living with a prostitute. I mean, why would you do that? <laughs> What are you? What exactly are you trying to do? But you know what? I shouldn't even ask that because a lot of cats out here today are trying to turn holes in the housewives. Well, that's just only one. That's one piece of information that came out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. There are other things in the meeting that didn't come out. Now, first of all, um, you guys have been following the NFL for a long time. Uh, it's hard to prove the NFL, that they would come up with a plan that they would suspend one of their great and up coming stars in Zeke Elliott by a conspiracy theory. I mean, so many people would have to be involved. Um, the NFL didn't put that young lady in Zeke's life. It wasn't like she was planted there. That was a relationship that he had before he came into the National Football League. I agree with that. And um, this is why I constantly go on and on in regards to the so-called black man and, and the decisions that he makes in choosing his woman. You know, a, a lot of brothers, man, y'all don't choose women the right way. And it doesn't mean that you have to be super picky. You just have to understand when you're dealing with a concubine as opposed to a wife. All right. You don't treat a concubine the same way that you treat a wife. You don't treat a concubine with the same level of gravity and seriousness that you do a wife. And when you're dealing with a concubine, you have to evaluate her mental sanity. Why is that? Because as I've stated before, every time a woman lays down with a man, she receives the spirit of that man. She receives the DNA of that man. All, that, all, all those strands of data are floating around in her bloodstream. All right? Melding with her chromosomes, affecting her persona, affecting who she is. So you have to understand that, man. You run around dealing with these broads. Some of these broads I had 22, 23 years old have, have been with 20, 25, 30 men. 
right? These are all things that have to be weighed in the balance before you take a female seriously, much less impregnate one. I mean, give me a break. Now, what if he had slipped up and impregnated this woman? It would have been 18 years of hell for him. Now, allegedly, she was trying to throw him off of his game by sleeping with one of his teammates and sending him text messages about it. All right. All this is his fault because of his bad decision making. He's not too swift upstairs. He's swift on the field, but not upstairs. All right. So he really needs help. Zeke was already under investigation before he signed the NFL contract. So I don't believe it was, there was a conspiracy. I do believe that as we get more information, because up until Tuesday, we had only heard the NFL side as far as leaking information. Now we're starting to get Zeke's side of things. Now I've talked to people that are very, very close to him, and they feel like they have a strong case. The NFL is under the gun here because they established that domestic violence or signs of domestic violence, a player would get six games. Now, if they don't give six games, what kind of domestic policy do they have? That's exactly why I stated that they must give six games because of it. it's an optic situation. All right, please keep in mind that the, the two most powerful owners in football and really probably in professional sports right now are Bob Kraft and Jerry Jones. Also notice that those are the two owners that Goodell has gone back and forth with the most over the last three, four years. All right. So Goodell has to has to do this to make it look good to the mass media at large that he is in control of the league that he is supposed to be commissioning. Now, of course, once he upholds this six game suspension, which I'm sure he's going to do. Um, Jerry Jones is going to make he's going to make it a judicial case and um, it's going to be the NFL versus Jerry Jones. And who knows, they may have a backdoor um, agreement, a backroom agreement. I should say that, you know, go ahead, give him six games, make it look good for the league. I will appeal, string it out in court. And, you know, maybe we can get some changes done. I'm sure that Goodell really doesn't want it to be a six game suspension for players who are just being accused of domestic violence. But right now we're in the age of kowtowing to the woman. Right. And let me say this, too. And I mentioned this already in regards to the domestic violence thing. A lot of these things, these altercations between men and women, they're functions of men putting the woman on a pedestal. If you're in a if you're in a, a dynamic where you feel like you have to hit a woman, um, you made a series of mistakes, man. Right. You getting involved in a physical altercation with a woman is just a culmination of all the bad decisions that you made. You made a mistake picking her. You made a mistake tolerating all the verbal assaults and disrespect that I'm sure that she um, volleyed your way before you couldn't take it anymore. And you've made a series of mistakes in regards to your decision making abilities and your ability to control yourself. That's why I say, man, when you receive anything into your life, man, I mean, shit, that's like receiving Certain, you know, certain kind of food. You got to know what you put in your body. You got to know what you put into your spirit. You got to know what you're bringing into your life. A lot of these people got demons on them, man. A lot of these people have demons on them. That's what they established. Six games would be the minimum a player would be suspended for. Especially a lot of these damn women. All right? <laughs> Straight up. A lot of these dudes have demons on them, too. They want to argue and go back and forth like bitches. But a lot of these women have demons on them from receiving all these various penises, man. Receiving all this different sperm and got all this DNA floating in their bloodstream from all these different dudes. You got to be very, very wily and very careful with who you're dealing with and in what capacity you're dealing with them. Now, these hearings aren't about anything else. They're not about Zeke being careless, doing other things. It's not about the fight that he had in a bar. Did he break a guy's? It's not about pulling someone's top down. This is about domestic violence only. So for me, it's going to be hard. To come off of six games. Yeah, it might be about domestic violence uh, only, but they're also weighing those other things in the balance. If the brother was going every weekend, they go give away uh, turkeys and, and, you know, uh, give away clothing to the homeless every weekend. It, it, they would have thought twice about giving this man six games. I believe that. The fact that this man is going around at, at uh, St. Patrick's Day pulling out titties and knocking dudes out at the club is not helping him. It's either six games are no games because domestic violence is the only thing that they are they only have them are having the hearing for so chris carter you and i have talked a lot off camera about what's going on behind the scenes here 
but I want you to know that I opened this show today by applauding Kia Wright Roberts for having the guts to testify against her biggest boss, Roger Goodell, and, and also against her immediate boss, Lisa Friel. Oh, Skip, please. You're just happy that some woman was uh, advocating to, you know, to have Ezekiel Elliott play all 16 games. You don't give a shit about nobody having no damn courage to their convictions. When the Ray Rice thing came down, you were one of the main simps on TV talking about anybody accused should get suspended for it, should get kicked out the league and all this other shit. Now that, it's, now that it's affecting the Cowboy, now you want everybody to stand up against their boss. Get the fuck out of here. And I think expose some corruption behind the scenes because, as Shannon points out, she was the only one to interview the accuser. And for her to step up like that put Roger Goodell in, in a very tricky situation here because, again, I think he got exposed. And keep in mind, too, Skip has an issue with Goodell because Goodell also suspended one of his other boyfriends, Tom Brady. All right. So that's really what Skip is mad about. Look, whenever the NFL does certain things like this, um, we have to understand the NFL is a multi-billion dollar business. Yes, it is about optics. But the NFL also has a very, very, very high grade investigative department. They know a lot of things that they're not going to tell the regular people because um, it's not good for business if you if you know about the the sexual proclivities of their athletes or the off the field habits of their athletes. You know, they basically want to keep things on a need to know basis. And, you know, it, it, it helps with the image of the league. Because I think he had an agenda going in. He was going to make an example of Ezekiel with or without credible, convincing evidence. And if you know Kia's background, Duke undergraduate, Vanderbilt Law School, and then chose to be the assistant DA in Brooklyn, handling hundreds of domestic violence cases, sexual assault cases, murder cases, drug cases, gang violent cases. Right, but you know, you, you guys have already created this conundrum for yourself. You guys are the ones who created this maelstrom back during the Ray Rice case where any time a woman said anything, everybody had to bow down to her. Anytime she made an accusation, um, it was guilty until proven innocent. You guys created that atmosphere, right? So now we're in this, neo, this, this neoliberal fascist environment where anytime a woman or a homosexual is offended, everybody's supposed to, you know, start sweating and, and, and be apologetic. And now it's coming back to bite you. What do you expect? I mean, a lot of these females, they are going to try to take a chunk out of the ass of an athlete. Because it's their dream to um, get their little 15 minutes of fame. Right? She's on record as, to, as telling Ezekiel Elliott that she's going to try to ruin his career. So, of course, that woman, Kia Roberts, or whatever her name is, is going to state that um, she doesn't believe that he should be suspended. Because she knows what, what bruises from an ass whooping look like. Like, come on, man. That's why I've always said the whole Floyd Mayweather beating up women thing. No. Floyd Mayweather has done a, a, did a very poor job as a young man choosing women. He was running around picking hood rats and he got into hood rat shit. All right. That's what happens when you, when you deal with hood rats. You end up getting caught up in hood rat bullshit. And that's what happened to Ezekiel Elliott. All right. You know, he got hooked up with a skeezer and, and now he's dealing with skeezer shit. So, you know, this, this has to be a learning experience for him. I hope, that, I hope that he does get six games. He needs it with his stupid ass. It, it, she has been there and done all that. So I think for her to look into the eyes of the accuser and say, not credible enough, is very credible to me. So, so now, what is your view of her and what she stepped forward and did? Well, you make a good point as, as far as her information not being allowed to be in the report or her not being able to communicate um, her opinion towards Roger. But Lisa Frail is her boss. So I've had a number of occasions where I really thought something, but my boss had a difference of opinion. Now, my boss in Lisa is given the overall opinion of the investigation to Roger and a number of other people. So this is not just one person. In the Ray Rice investigation, there were people that recommended to Roger he shouldn't be suspended. There were also people recommended he should be suspended for two games or a game. All right? I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but this is not the first time someone's made a recommendation. Now, that's a great point. If there were people who were, who were saying that Ray Rice should only get one game or two games um, but you know what? That was back before they had a real protocol. So I really can't say that. 
I really can't say how off that was. But I, look, I've stated about the Ray Rice thing already in the past. That's what you call a dysfunctional relationship. A lot of you brothers get caught up in these dis. And let me say this, man. We've all been through different things in life, right? I make a lot of these videos. Not n number one because you no, know, I talk about the things that I enjoy talking about. But number two, you know, we've all been through things in life that are learning experiences. And you know, you go through life and you you walk down the street, you put on your TV, and you see. Brothers keep getting caught up in, in, in dumb shit. So, you know, sometimes you have to share your little experiences and share your observations so that maybe you could spark a little something in, in a brother so that when he gets caught up in some dumb shit or is about to, he could say, OK, you know what? Let me let me fall back. Let me just, you know, take a little detour left because I see things are not going to end up right with this broad. All right. The Ray Rice thing was dysfunctional. A lot of times brothers get caught up in these relationships with these bros where they get into this this makeup and break up and we on break and now we back together and that's my down ass bitch and this is my down ass nigga and we fighting and scrapping. I'm calling the cops on her. She calling the cops on me. We both getting arrested. We come back. We have makeup sex and then we have a baby and then we break up and then she get with the next man and then she get back with me. See, all that shit is, de is demonic, man. All right? That's demonic, man. This is what I mean. I mentioned this before. Um, true mastery is learning to accept the monotony of life. It's not about all this haphazardness and all this bullshit excitement. And see, brothers fall into that trap, man. You know, a lot of cats talk, and I'll, I'll probably do another video on this when I get the, the right backdrop. You know, cats, I always say cats talking about you know women like thugs and black women like thugs. No, it's not about the thugs. Women in general and black women in particular, many black women, not all, but many, most. They like chaos. The so-called thug represents chaos. All right. The so-called thug also represents woman worship. All right. The thug cult to the thuggy cult worship the goddess Kali, the goddess of destruction, the goddess of chaos. All right. Everything is spiritual, brothers. So you have the power to restore order. It's just a matter of are you a man of order or are you a man of chaos? It's up to you to figure this shit out. But Ray Rice was a man of chaos and you see what happened with his life. All right. Based on, oh, they shouldn't be suspended. That's why you have a group of people and you get a bunch of different people's opinion on this. I got I got confidence in Lisa Friel and her ability when she was hired, because her if you think the lady who was doing the investigating her resume was strong. Lisa, Lisa look at Lisa Friel's background yep, it's and the reason why the NFL hired her and brought her uh, brought her aboard a couple years ago. So I'm not going to get caught up with just one piece of the investigation. There are a lot of pieces to this puzzle. That's just one piece that doesn't fit. Uh, CC, this is where I think you and I differ. I think they should give great latitude and great deference to the lead investigator. She spoke to this, uh, uh, this alleged victim on six different occasions from what I'm being told. And for her not to talk directly to the guy that's going to hand down the punishment. And I get sometimes our bosses do have a difference of opinion. But when it comes down to something like this, it's hard for me to believe that the lead investigator would not be heard. It is hard because we're also on the outside. We're only getting a little, um, little, little pieces. I agree. I agree with that. That's why a lot of time I like to wait to make videos because sometimes, you know, Cats always want you to make a video right away about something where only 10% of the information is being divulged to the public. Sometimes you have to wait, you know, you got to wait until the cake, you know, is fully risen to take it out the oven. This is of what the overall picture is. Also, um, I have come to find out through my investigation, through my sources, there's also other information that would incriminate Zeke. So, yes, you guys are saying the investigator, she recommended because the witness wasn't credible. Yeah, the witness said that she was going to sue Zeke. She was going to ruin his career. She did a lot of things that women who have been abused that they do. And also, she did a lot of things that women who are bitter and want revenge do. So that's why it's up to the NFL to, dis to discern and decipher which is which. And on a even grander scale and on an even more important scale it's important for men to be able to discern and decipher what type of woman you're dealing with all right because i've already mentioned this the woman is like a russian egg 
She has different faces that she's hiding inside of each face. You open that shell, there's another shell. Open that one, it's another. They got different layers. All right, they're like an onion or a Russian, or a Russian egg, man. All right, you must be patient when you're dealing with that woman. Because she is going to show you the side that she wants you to see to try to bring you into her web. All right, please keep that in mind. Her heart is like snares and nets. Ecclesiastes 7, 26 to 28. Please meditate on that. Now, her overall credibility and be able to prove in a court of law is totally different. Was he guilty of domestic violence? I'm going to tell you something. I don't need an investigator, but something happened to that young lady. All right. Who knows? She, she might have been in a rough sex. If what the cat that made the comment on my last video with Ezekiel Elliott and Terrell Owens said was true. She has some little light bruise. I mean, come on, man. Them, them little light ass marks on her damn body. I don't even know what the hell them was. Some nigga could have been sucking on her damn shoulder and got a little mark on the damn. Look like it was a damn white girl anyway. I mean, I'm not getting caught up in all that. I, I know what an ass whooping looked like. I know what somebody who got their ass whooped looked like. That chick ain't get her ass whooped. Knock it off, Chris. I don't know if Zeke committed domestic violence, but something happened to her during the period of time that she was with Ezekiel. Now, whose fault is that? What happened? I don't know all that. But Right. Well, we know we, we could pretty much guess what the narrative is. Um, Ezekiel's going to say she probably tried to attack me. She was frustrated. I was going to leave her. And that's another thing, man. You know, a lot of times you brothers moving with these broads. And then they want to tell the broad what they're going to do now that their relationship. Well, you know, I'm moving out and I don't want to be with you. Sometimes you, you brothers got to learn to shut the fuck up until you done moved out. Because you still up, you still up in the place with the broad. And she's like, okay, nigga. I'm going to take my pound of flesh out of your ass before you leave. Sometimes you brothers talk too fucking much, man. You know that you're know that you going to move on from the broad. Let her know after you're gone. The fuck you trying to prove? But I do know... That investigators also said that her bruises were inconsistent with someone falling down or bumping into things. And they were more consistent with someone who had experienced domestic violence. They was more consistent to me with somebody who was having some freaky ass sex. All them little light ass marks. Man, get out of here. So that's another piece that okay. several people had told the panel also in inquiring about Ezekiel and did he do this? So Chris, from what you're hearing, from what I'm hearing from you, it sounds like you're saying six games is gonna stand. If he's not suspended for six games, what kind of domestic policy do you have? Agreed. Uh, they're gonna try to use this guy, you know, as a, uh, as a benchmark for all the other players in the, in the NFL. This is their policy. Six games minimum. I'm not getting into did Zeke do it? Did I think he didn't do it? That's irrelevant. I'm talking about what the policy is. And you don't have a policy if someone you think committed domestic violence and you don't give them six games. It's inconsistent. The Ray Rice thing, it was botched. It was inconsistent. The well, the Ray Rice thing really wasn't botched because they didn't have a policy yet. The Josh Brown investigation, it was botched. It was inconsistent. We that was botched, but we know why that was. I mean, he had the complexion for the connection. With Ezekiel Elliott, there should be some type of consistency if you're going to have a program. If not, just let it be a free-for-all like it was before. Don't punish guys for domestic violence or violent crimes against women, elderly, or children. We'll just let it go like the wild, wild west. Hell yeah, why not? Just let everybody just whoop ass, you know? <laughs> just, just whoop ass and hit people upside the head with frying pans. Why the hell not? CC, for me, the problem that I have with that is that when you're dealing with this issue, it can't be a think. You can't think somebody did this. You got to be able to prove this beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt because you're you're going to tag this man. There are things that are, you know, in, in, in the hierarchy, I believe a sexual predator, a domestic abuser, they get viewed differently even than a murderer. Absolutely. Because you can justify killing somebody. You can't justify sexually assaulting somebody. You can't justify, you know, molesting a child or, or, or raping a woman. You can't justify those things. You could justify killing a motherfucker, though. And to tag this young man with those initials, DV, that, that no, I, I don't need a thing. You got to prove this. You're not going to hang this on if it's me. Now, I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about Z. But I'm not going to let you hang these initials on me because you fought. 
you need to be able to prove it. And the burden of proof should not be on Zeke. She brought these charges. She said this happened. It shouldn't be on Zeke to prove he was innocent. Well, that's true, Shannon. But, you know, you got to take that up with the NFL Players Association. They have to collectively bargain better. Uh, and take the power out of the commissioner's hands. Right now, they have him set up as the ultimate magistrate. So whose fault is that, brother? Uh, Shannon, as you know, being a public figure, as long as you've been a public figure, your brother was a public figure. <laughs> I know. Everything is not black and white, all right? As far as the NFL and their ability to investigate, they do not have to prove what they have to prove in the court of law. Their burden of proof is a lot less than what you have to prove. Absolutely. That's why I said it. Look, the, the NFL is an independent court. All right. They have their own uh, jurisprudence. They don't need to go by the, uh, you know, they don't need to go by the protocol of the United States justice system or the judicial system. They discern and decipher based on their own criteria. And they are an optics league. Now, Zeke and his camp. They wouldn't take any type of leniency. They wouldn't admit to any type of guilt. So Zeke feels the same way that you feel. The people around him feel the same way. Kessler, his lawyer, that's why they filed the suit. They feel the same way. They're trying to get his name totally cleared from these charges. Good stuff, CC. Be sure to check out First Things First with Chris, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf starting Tuesday at 6.30 Eastern. We're looking forward to it. Chris, thanks for joining us. Do it. <laughs> but anyway... This was a good little conversation that they had on the Ezekiel Elliott issue. Uh, I'm sure that there'll be more to come. Peace.